Hi everybody, a really fun effect we're gonna be learning a lot about in this particular video is how to rotate items around a point. Very similar to the example you see on screen. So on screen we have a, a smiley face with a, a bunch of food items just spinning nicely around it. And the way we pull it off is by using mostly just CSS and some techniques that we've had in our toolbox for quite a long time. We're just gonna combine them in an interesting way to create the effect that we're going to be seeing right here. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I jump into the code and starting to build this, I just wanna take a step back and explain some of the concepts that are involved as part, as part of making this effect work the way it does. It's gonna be important, especially if you want to both just deeply understand how this effect works, but also modify it in more creative and fun ways for whatever you are trying to do. So one of the first things to kind of explain is this idea of a transform origin for almost all the elements that we will be dealing with, whether it is a div, an image, a text element, you know, what have you, there's some transform origin. And this is usually the point that is the center vertically and horizontally of the element we're talking about, but it is also the point that determines how our behaviors for size, rotation, changing position, and so will be based on. And so you can imagine in a case, the best way I can explain it is that imagine you have a piece of paper and if you have a hole in the piece of paper that you like make right in the middle of it, spinning that paper from that middle point will cause a very different behavior than causing a hole at the top left corner of the piece of paper where a turning is actually more of like a, almost like a wobbling effect as opposed to a rotation. And the only thing that changed is a position of the transform origin, the position where the point that all the calculations choose as their origin for how they're going to calculate whatever changes that would be happening to them. And so the effect you get by default is very similar to being in a chair and just spinning on it like this example shows. Now, what we're trying to do though, is not just rotate an element at its own center point, which is spinning on its own. That's easy, you've done it before many times, and we have many videos on how to pull that off. Instead, we wanna rotate an item around a different point to create this kind of windmill-like effect where it's rotating around a, a center area. And so to rotate an, an element around another point altogether, there are two things we need to do. One is make sure element is centered directly over the point when rotated around, and the second one is shift or transit element away from the origin point. Now, both of these sound pretty abstract and we're gonna go into a little bit more detail to see exactly what these mean because a lot of our coding will be dependent on how we interpret what these two points to be. Let's start with the first point. This is the one that is actually the trickiest because we wanna ensure our element is centered over the point when I rotate around, and there's no right or wrong answer on how you pull this off. It's very situational because depending on how you've architected your application, depending on how all of your elements or what layout container all the all of your elements are in, you can either center an element by using opposite positioning and shifting it by 50%, like we probably did 10, 15 years ago, or using some more modern techniques like grid and flexbox. And so we have to pick one that's appropriate for you. I don't have a guidance here, but an example, I will choose one approach and then you can choose whichever one makes sense. The one we do have full control over though, of course, and it's almost critical to make it work, is point number two, where we shift our element away from the transform origin to define the radius for how wide the rotation will be. And this is in the one way it makes more sense with visuals. So let's say that we have an element at the center. You know, it's centered at the transform origin. It's just like the image we saw earlier where we had it right where the X of the X and Y points is in the center of the, of the square shaped div. Now, the first thing we do is we hit translate it. We decide to say, you know what? Let's keep the transform origin where it is, but we're gonna shift it over in this case by let's say about you know, 100, 200 pixels. And so it looks a little bit like this. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind though. When it comes to transforms, a transform is not actually physically moving the element from one location to another or adjusting its physical core characteristics. It's a modification of it, a copy in many ways of it. So even when we do a translate, the transform origin isn't shifting along with the new translated point. It is still where the origin was, where we had our square earlier. That's still where the an element thinks its center point is. It's just that everything we do though, is gonna be adjusted based on this assumption because any transform that it changes, such as a rotation, will occur as if the element is still in its original position. And this detail is crucial because you're gonna see in a moment what a rotation with a shifted transform origin like this actually looks like. 
So notice that because we're still doing the rotation and our transform origin is still at the center point of our square where it was originally, it rotates appropriately, but the end result though is of the entire translated version of it being rotated instead, which gives us this effect where you have a center point somewhere and you have an invisible arm with the actual element you're rotating all the way around it. And if we were to play that logically throughout the full rotation, you can kind of see how this example is going to be turning out where you have an element completely centered, we translate it, and then we just rotate it. And the end result is very similar to the rotation effect we want to create where you have something in the center, and then you have a lot of elements rotating around it. And so those are the main concepts that I wanted to run by you just to give you a familiarity with how the CSS and why the CSS we have is going to be doing the things it does. Now, you can absolutely just passively follow along by sitting back some cop eating some popcorn and, and just watching what I'm going to be doing. Or you can actually follow along as well. If you are actually following along, there's a code pen that I have here. You know, it's bit.ly slash rotating round point. Go there and you can follow along with me. So I am going to have this page already open. And this is what this ultimately this example looks like at a starting point. As you can see, we just have our circle that's centered here. Nothing beyond that happening because that's what we're going to be adding ourselves as part of our little effect. Before we go too far though, I just want to walk through and explain what we have going on here. So I already explained, we have our circle is at the center of this div element. And the way we pull that off is by if I look at the CSS, or in this case, I can see that I have the body, I have a display of grid, justify content center with its 100 VW. And so pretty straightforward on that front. And then if I look at the actual element itself, which is the, the main it did with the element class value of main, you can see I have a display of grid, justify and align content is center. Yes, I could have used one of the more simpler ones like like place content, but I, I just went with these two. It's, it's a habit, it's a habit thing. And so you can see how that is what helps center our element or little circle here because if I look at the HTML itself, you can now see that, you know, I have div class main, I have an image called the smiley and that is centered perfectly here, which is exactly what we want, at least for the effect that we are going for. Now, the thing we want to do is let's go ahead and add an item we want to rotate, you know, because that's probably the easiest thing to do. We know that we want our items to rotate all within this particular square right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy an image element and just place it right here. And so I have an image you know, class values item and source equals this particular image. And this is an image of avocado. So you can see the avocado displayed right there. Now, because we have everything inside this parent container set to be centered vertically and horizontally, as we would expect, this element is also centered vertically and horizontally. And so the first thing we wanna do is do the, do the step number two, which is transit the item, make it shift a bit. And so it has a class value of item. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw tot dot item, add a little bit of our translation work here, which is, let's see, I'm going to, what's the best way to pull this off? You know, I'm thinking out loud here and looking at my, looking at my notes. The easiest way is to, you know, one way we can do this is of course by transform translate X and then set it to like, you know, 120 pixels. You know, we can absolutely pull that off. And once I do that, you can now see that our avocado has been translated over. And I can do rotate and I can do 45 degrees. I'm just showing you what's going on, by the way. This is not actually how I'm gonna do this. But notice that as I'm doing that, you can see that the avocado rotates around the point just the way we wanted to. So we change from 45 degrees to let's say 60 degrees. You can see very similar behavior where it shifted even further and, and you can so on. You can see what the, the effect ultimately looks like. But what we really want to do though is actually have it animate and have it be a continuous item that we go for instead. So we first define the keyframes we want to do. Add keyframes. And we're going to spin around. And let me actually just minimize this part of the window so that we have more space for the HTML itself. We make everything a little bit big, maybe too big. And so I'm going to kind of keyframe spin around. I'm going to do from transform rotate zero degrees and then have it translate by 120 pixels. So it's gonna be starting off from the state and it's going to end at transform, rotate 360 degrees 
and it's going to continue to translate though of 120 pixels you know we want to keep it at a fixed arm's length from where we are rotating from and then the the part to which I highlight here is animation go ahead and find animation keyword spin around six seconds and I want this to be linear. You know, we don't have an easing function where it looks like the item is accelerating as it's going forward, and then it's labeled as infinite. And so notice now that our item is spinning around appropriately uh, around this uh, around this point. And the only thing we really did is that we specified a keyframe rule where we're just rotating an element from zero to 360, and we're also translating it in parallel to ensure that we're not rotating at the certain point. And if we didn't do this translate, just for kicks, I'm gonna show you what happens if we didn't have this translate, you'll see that our, our, our avocado basically, it's just spinning in its own circle at its own point because the transform origin is right at the center of where things are. So let me go ahead and just undo that, get back to translate 120, 120. That way we get the effect exactly the way we want it to. Now, the thing is this, we wanna have more elements here. Like, you know, we wanna have more than just an avocado spinning, we wanna have other elements that are going to be added as well. So I'm gonna go back to HTML, and you know, so you're watching me copy and paste a lot of content, or sorry, writing it by, by hand, all these content, I'm just gonna copy and paste the images I want to display here. And so I'm going to essentially go back here, paste this all in, get the tabbing just right, and, you know, got it and let me go back to here and you can now see that we have much more image elements with a class value of item and you can now see the source of it being printed as well which is the appropriate image and notice what you see here though all of the items are kind of stacked on top of each other you know like we have the avocado first and then a bunch of other food items that are going on top of it how do we address some of that and the way we address it is by adding an animation delay you know we had an animation delay to each of our items to make them not be staggered on top of each other so let's give you an example animation delay and let's go ahead and give it a value of i don't know negative two seconds animation style equals seconds and so once i've done that you can see that you know our avocado is now spinning separately from everything else and i can go ahead and repeat this for you know every other item where we just change the value of 2.5 seconds to 4 seconds and so on you can then see like how each of the items are staggered differently now what i have just shown you is that animation delay is how you can ensure that each of these items aren't staggered on top of each other what this doesn't really help with though is that this is not really precise i'm just throwing random numbers there the thing is there's a very nice way you could figure out what that offset value needs to be and that value is by essentially dividing two things. The animation delay for you know, this particular thing is the duration, which in this case is six seconds, six seconds, divided by the number of items that we're actually rotating. And so in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six items that are rotating, and our duration is six as well, which means our offset is exactly one second. And so what we can do here is set the animation delay by increasing by one second starting with one and by actually going down each item and this needs to be a negative value if you had the positive value you, what you'll see is that actually i'll show you what, what you'll see but we'll go with a negative value first so for the first item negative one second second one is negative two seconds for the third item it is negative three seconds i'm just going to copy and paste this in just to avoid cop you know writing too much of unnecessary text and then each other item is going to be negative. The fourth item is going to be minus four, fifth item is going to be minus five, and the sixth item is going to be minus six. And so once I've done that, notice what you see here. You now see that all of the items are equally just spinning between each other without any difficulty. And the reason for picking one, two, three, four, and five, six is again the very straightforward formula of duration divided by number of items. Now, I mentioned that you have to start with a negative number and keep going down. And the reason for it is, let me show you very quickly what happens if I remove this minus value from it. When that happens, notice that each item here, the delay happens to go in a positive direction, which means, which is actually true. Now, if animation delay is positive, it means that you wait the X number of seconds before the keyframes get applied to that particular element. 
Whereas if you say negative value, it is almost as the animation has been running forever. You're just going back in time to where it would be at the minus or the earlier second as if the animation had already been running. And so to ensure we don't have this effect where you start off with no animations rotating and over a period of like the full six seconds, all of them get in, using a negative value solves that very, very elegantly. And so what you have here is essentially an effect that does a lot of this just the way you want it to. Let's say that you know you want these items to be a little smaller than the other items around it. You can do a scale uh, in the keyframe itself of 0.7. I'm going to scale of 0.7 in both to and from. And once I have done that, you can now see that the items look exactly like the example of the animation we started off with. Now. I, there's a written article as well on how to do all this work. And this other variation I have in it that involves actually rotating an item in addition to it, the ability for it to kind of actually spin on its own. And I'll quickly show you what that looks like. And then you can look at the actual video itself. Uh, I'm sorry, the article itself on how to pull it off. Let me go right here. And notice in this case, we still have the same exact effect. We still have items rotating around it, but notice that each rotating item is also rotating on its own. So in the previous effect, you just had the items rotating without any real change. But in this one, the, each of the rotating items is also rotating, which is that's a nice, pretty interesting effect. It's not a whole lot of modification over what I just showed you in terms of how we built it, but I, I encourage you to take a look at it and just understand how we, how we pulled that particular version of it off. And so there you have it, uh, a very quick overview that talked about how we think about rotating an item, the role transform origin plays, and how making a simple adjustment in transform origin by doing a translate allows us to, with very little extra effort, just all it's just a rotate transform, be able to pull off the effect that we ultimately ended up seeing. And we also learned a little bit about the animation delay technique to allow us to have an animation from the very beginning look like it's been running for quite some time. So by using a negative value for the duration, or sorry, the animation delay, we're able to create the effect that started off as if the rotation was always meant to be. And with that, if you have any questions, please post in the forums where I and others will be happy to help you out. The forums are great because you can search for technical content, highlight your code, do all the kind of things that make asking questions much more nicer, much more ergonomic than what you'll get under YouTube comments right here. Subscribe to the Krupa newsletter where 100,000 people currently are happily enjoying in their inbox various topics on web development that I happen to be sharing with many of you. Lastly, follow me at Krupa on Twitter, on Facebook, on pretty much any social media network where Krupa refers to me. It is the same in most cases. In some cases, there are other people named Krupa that happen to claim that spot first. So just be, be look for the orange, look for the pixelated version, or just look for my face and you'll happily see me there. And lastly, if you enjoy my style of explaining things either in, in article form on the website or in video form like you're seeing right now, check out my books that I write on a lot of fun end topics. They're available in paperback and digital editions. So you might be pretty happy with that. And so before I, I guess I'm at the end of my slides here. So I will see you all next time.